Hey you, welcome to episode 151 of Legally Clueless. Thanks for rocking with this podcast. If this is your first time listening, welcome to the family. Audio episodes like this one go out every single Monday. And if you check out our YouTube channel, you can watch our video series. Season 2 is ongoing. We have our tour series out as well. It's Legally Clueless on YouTube. Ooh, 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 ooh. I almost forgot. We've just hit 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is super awesome. And and if you're one of those 10k people, thank you so much for being part of the fam. All right, so where were... Mm. Yes, as you have just joined the family, you're checking out our YouTube, join us on Instagram. We're at Legally Clueless Podcast. A link to it is in the show notes. I'm really excited about this episode because you get to hear a story from a very cool Kenyan that I happened to meet in France. Listen to this. I remember switching courses, I think, two times or three times. And I remember she was typing a lot, of course, because she was typing her project. I got very fascinated with computers because in our school, in primary school, we didn't have computers. I think this was going to be the third time I was dropping out of uni. I said for my attachment, I want to do my own project. I want to set up a startup. So many people sent their ideas because there was no money to be won. We sent it in and we got in. And even in the incubation program, I think we were only three ladies. Yeah, it got to a point where it took a really big toll on me. Didn't help that I, my parents and my family did not understand what I was doing. The product was not making money. I was not in school and I was just also questioning a lot like did I make a mistake I said ah this Kisumo the developer ecosystem is not very vibrant my brother-in-law was trying to you know talk to me and tell me why are you going back to Kisumu there's nothing in Kisumu for you to run a space you need to pay rent you need to pay electricity there are bills to be paid that's coming up a little later in this episode I do hope that you're doing well January is over but surprisingly I feel like this year's January moved a lot faster than the years before <laughs> so I wasn't even ready it's really flown by but maybe it's because I have a lot of deadlines a lot going on so the days is kind of like I don't know if it's that I don't know <laughs> anyway I am glad it's over because February is my birthday month I'm going to be turning 33 on the 5th of February so in about five days six six seven five six days <laughs> six days I don't know if I care too much about the years after 30 because the third floor is pretty <sighs> what is the word interesting insightful clear like the clarity I've had so far in my 30s is just on a whole other level I mean there's a lot more adulting to be done on the third floor but I would never go back to my 20s the mental chaos <laughs> That surrounded quite a few of my years in my 20s. Uh-uh, it's okay. Let's just keep going on this third floor. <laughs> I even hear the fourth floor is better. Let's keep going. But yeah, super excited that my birthday month is starting. And that I'm going to be traveling to Ethiopia this week for like three days in total. But either way, I've found that I really enjoy traveling. 2020 being stuck in the house, in the country was terrible so I'm I'm really excited that I get to start my traveling pretty early in 2022. Definitely not looking forward to the COVID tests that I have to do because I think they're just uncomfortable first and overpriced but I am looking forward to being super stimulated when it comes to poetry. I'm writing so much like I think I write every day. It's been such a long time since that happened like I write a poem every day, or at least I write a concept for a poem every day. It's fantastic. So hopefully the change in environments, maybe something will inspire me in Ethiopia. I don't know, even though I'm just there for really three days. Let's see how it goes. Okay, about the song of the week. Oh my days, I can't believe I've never shared this song with you. It's by Lauren Vula, who if you listen to the podcast you know I absolutely love and adore it actually broke my heart a couple of okay it didn't break my heart well I'm being so dramatic but it made me feel sad a couple of weeks ago when she posted that she's a bit down that she wasn't selling as many tickets for 
a performance or her tour. And I was like, okay, we need to go back and like stream all her music because we can't attend her concerts. And then I stumbled on one of the songs I completely forgot about. And I have just been playing it on loop. I haven't fully read the lyrics because what I really love about this song is the live instruments, which is like signature to Laura Mbula's music. How it builds up is just so beautiful. Some lines here and there are just quite poetic and intriguing. I don't know why my neighbor's dog is barking at this hour. Anyway, um, the name of the song is I Don't Know What the Weather Will Be. It's really something, the song. Please check it out. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. All right, throwback to August last year, which is when we went on tour across Kenya. And one of the places that we went to was Kisumu. So what we were doing in all of the cities or counties we went to, we were partnering with like local co-working spaces to just go and record stories there. And hey, maybe even record stories by people in their communities. Now, when we were in Kisumu, our partner was a community space stroke organization for the tech community in Kisumu called Lake Hub. And it was fantastic. They were so awesome. We had such a great day. Unfortunately, because, you know, when I go on tour and I'm recording stories, it's like marathon back to back to back to back. And I think it's so respectful to, in that moment, give the story person telling you this story all your attention so I never noticed anything happening around me and the contact that I'd been speaking to who's the CEO of Lake Hub his name is James he wasn't there at the time so I didn't end up meeting our storyteller today Dorcas who's part of the founding team and the director of programs at Lake Hub and an all-round awesome person but she was there but we didn't end up meeting that time fast forward that's the fast forward sound to <laughs> Okay, I crack myself up to October when we actually, I was going to say when I went to France, but yo, the podcast came as well. So we went to France. I was there for the new Africa France summit. And after the summit and I'd given my speech that I'd been working on for like four days before then in workshops, I just wanted to let loose you know so a bunch of us Kenyans got together and went for dinner and then one of the people at this dinner who sat right next to me is Dorcas and we begin talking and she's like yeah we know each other we're actually in the same advert I'm like what are you talking about (laughs) so earlier that year I was in an advert for the EU the European Union kind of like spotlighting amazing Africans who are innovating doing amazing things in the creative space in agriculture and tech and so many more spaces but I hadn't met her because obviously an advert is Everybody shoots their paths on different days and Dorcas is in Kisumu, I'm in Nairobi. So we were in the same advert, but we never ever met. We were in the same office space when we were doing the tour, but we never met. And then we met all the way in France. And now once again, my path with Dorcas crosses. In this episode, I have partnered with the European Union to help them in celebrating, recognizing and accelerating Africans. And in this case, Kenyans doing amazing things, specifically for Dorcas in the tech space and her story is going to take us from her being in confused about what in the world she wanted to do you know when it came to getting into university dropping out of courses about three times to her been mentioned in the EU Parliament. Legally Clueless in collaboration with the European Union supporting local initiatives. My name is Dorka Sowino. I'm from Kisumu and I grew up, I've basically grown up in Kisumu. I was not born here, but um, I was born in Nyeri. Yeah, <laughs> I was born in Nyeri and uh, but I moved to Kisumu when I was, I think, two years old. So basically spent my whole life here. Went to school in Kisumu, primary and high school. Then went to college, Went to I went to Kenya Polytechnic. To Kenya Polytechnic, I was very confused, like most high schoolers post high school you know, students who are trying to figure out what they want to do in, with their lives. I remember switching course, courses, I think two times or three times. It got to a point where I was just very confused. I didn't know what to do. And I, I moved in with my older sister. I grew up with four sisters. We have four girls in our house uh, brought up by just my mom. My dad died when I was uh, very young. When I was with my sister, I was confused because I just didn't know what to do. I'd heard of you know courses, but then they were not really appealing to me. I didn't feel them. I remember 
really choosing to do political science and that was supposed to be done at the University of Nairobi. But just because my uncle was a political scientist and not because it's, <laughs> I thought, oh, he has a good life. Maybe if I study political science, then I might just have a good life. But you see, that's not a reason enough. And deep down, I knew oh, I can't do it just because of that. And then there was, I think uh, around that time that was in 206 Bcom was very big and everyone was doing Bcom so I said oh yeah Bcom that's where it is at so <laughs> I enrolled to study Bcom at um, Kenya Poly Kenya Poly of course uh, I was I, I wasn't very excited to go to school to 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 go study Bcom and I moved in with my sister who was who had just was still in campus she was doing her a project last year a project and I remember she was typing a lot, of course, because she's typing her project. I got very fascinated with computers and, you know, just, just typing. I said, oh, you can type that? Because in our school, in primary school, we didn't have computers. And I remember that that was the first time I was really interacting with computers. And interacting at this point was just switching on the computer, playing movies, the, you know, CD. And, and that was it. And I said, can I? type can i help you type your project she said okay yeah i can so that was what i was doing and it used to take me so much time and i, I enjoyed it then at that point she was dating her now boyfriend who was a, a programmer just getting into programming and I, I was so fascinated with the zeros and ones and the numbers and letters I said, wow this is this is beautiful. This is magic. I was so drawn to it. So we made, was it a park? We did something with my brother-in-law. He was also very happy that that I was interested in computers. And computers were very new then. Programming was very new. So he said, okay, um, I told him I don't really like what I'm studying now. I said, okay, so go find a university or college. Uh, enroll yourself. I'll, I'll help you. I'll get you money to enroll. <laughs> and you'll study IT said okay this was just between the two of us because <laughs> this was i think this was going to be the third time i was dropping out of uni <laughs> so i went to town so confused trying to find a university and i bumped into mount kenya university i said okay i i took my papers there and they said okay yeah you will be admitted and that's how i got admitted so my mom doesn't know no one knows at this point my sister has wind of it, but she doesn't understand what we are doing. But she knows, uh, so I'm, I've moved from typing her project huh, to now doing things with my brother-in-law, her boyfriend now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a teenager. We are just, you know, vibing and yeah, you can do this, you can do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm really appreciative of him because he was, he was in campus then also just trying to make money. But for him to offer to pay my, <laughs> my uni, you know. <laughs> Like that, that's something, yeah. So, yeah, that's how I, I got in. He studied electrical engineering and he moved from electrical engineering to coding out of interest and curiosity. And I was curious, and I think for him, it was like finding someone else who's curious about it. But you know, also because for him, he had at some point through you know some of his courses in electrical engineering, like come across coding i hadn't so it was just me stumbling upon this thing and i got so curious about it so i think i guess that was fascinating for him and to see me getting very excited about about that my first day was i i, I remember going through my units and say oh yeah this actually i'm i'm ex because i can't remember my units from bcom and even when i tried to register for political science and all that i i don't remember so much but i remember mku the courses were very exciting and just no oh now i'm going to learn java oh that that's something yeah but also i must i must confess that i also like the is it not really the status but the uniqueness of it mm -hmm. just being able to tell people i can do java <laughs> I really, I really love that. I, I, I confess. Oh, so in the first day, we when I got in, we were I think in our class we were about thirty, and we were three women, three, and we became friends. We're still friends today. We were three, and we yeah we did a lot together. So what really also because that was just one of one stage of me getting deep into tech because you get in and you realize oh there's actually a lot of work to be done it's not just you know java and all that. there's a lot of learning that goes into it i was ready for that i didn't i didn't just <laughs> again change my mind and i also have to mention that i think at this point now my mom knows and she's done with me eh? because <laughs> i'm the last one and my sisters did the good and direct courses that people understand they're in nursing they're in administration so it, that's easy to understand and it didn't help that I'd switched courses so many times. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing this. <laughs> They're like, okay. In MKU, I had to like 
most uh, Kenyan curriculum curriculums you have to find uh, attachment and I was looking for an attachment I said for my attachment I want to do my own project I want to set up a startup startup company that was very ambitious but <laughs> I said oh yeah that's what I want to do I think I was 20 or 21 then I said I want to, yeah that's what I want to do I'm gonna look for an idea and develop a product out of it and that's gonna be my attachment so I did and for the project I linked up with again my friend the other lady who we were in class with she's called Esther so Esther and I came up with this idea of you know, linking small-scale farmers to buyers because Esther's background is in uh, the parents are farmers and all that. It was a good idea. We were ready to code it. We were ready to you know, create it. But then how do you then tell your teachers, your lecturers that you know, for my attachments, actually I'm going to work on this product, which hopefully or which I want to turn into a company. You know, that's just crazy. So lucky for me, there was a challenge by Safaricom. Safaricom was opened a challenge where they were going to support startups, ideas like that, and incubate them, just help them grow. And this was going to be done together with Strathmore University. So an incubation program said, wow, this is my chance. So we sent you our applications. I remember, I think we had there were, there were so many people sent their ideas because there was no money to be worn. We sent it in and we got in. I think uh, they only took 12 people. Yeah, we were among the 12. And even in the incubation program, I think we were only three ladies. So, I mean, that was just affirming me. I, I went to school very confidently and told my lecturers. So for my attachment, I have a company that I'm building. <laughs> and we're doing it with Esther. And we have this, like, what? I remember my lecturer asked me, how do you get these opportunities? How did you get these opportunities? And I just applied and I got in. And I worked for, on that product for years, I think, um, uh, but four years, I was just on it. I, I fundraised. We were category winners at the end of the program. So we got some money. We, we fundraised. We got into other programs. There was the Demo Africa, which is also now a regional Africa program. Yeah, every year. And I learned quite a lot uh, at that age. I was, you know, meeting investors and trying to pitch to them and telling them why they need to invest in this company. Uh, I was talking to farmers. I was building it. I was coding, doing everything. So at this point, I'm still in uni. But then I'm thinking, I need to focus on my product because I cannot balance both. I remember my family is also is also now more confused he said you are now you have a company <laughs> what he, he's no that's not how companies work <laughs> say it's a startup company my brother-in-law is excited for me but also again also a bit confused <laughs> yes because i'm telling him for me to build this i need to give school a break <laughs> Because I need to focus on this. I, I remember people used to speak in Lotus. Not even Lotus. You know when you're the last born, everyone thinks you're a child. They're like, what is she doing now with her life? What is she doing? What? What? What is she doing? Because there's a time, there's a, there's a photo that appeared on one of the newspapers. And I was with the late Bob Colimo. Like, she's she's what she's with bob Col she works for safaricom <laughs> i mean there was a lot of confusion at home she works for safaricom now we we, do, we we don't know what she's doing so you know it was also very challenging because the startup ecosystem in kenya was just growing the tech startup ecosystem was just growing there's a lot to be figured out it didn't help that i was a, a young woman in the space because there are not so many women also in the space still there are not so many women in the space uh, tech ecosystem so my mentor i remember my mentors my the people I was talking to uh, men and older men. I was also very uncomfortable most of the times because they would uh, sometimes ask us, ask me to go meet them in, in you know, hotels, restaurants, and um, it's, uh, it's, it was so uncomfortable fundraising and all that but but beyond that also just the whole process of fundraising and building a product is not very easy mm -hmm. and especially if you don't have a very good support system around you i mean i'm very appreciative of the programs that i was part of because i made so many strides i met so many people that i'm still in contact with but then the whole process was uh, yeah it got to a point where it took a really big toll on me didn't help that I, my parents and my family did not understand what I was doing the product was not making money I was not in school and I was just also questioning a lot like did I make a mistake mm -hmm. yeah and I remember my brother-in-law coming back and telling me 
and also my mom talking to me and telling me you know what you can actually find a job you if you know you know how to code my brother-in-law was now telling me you know how to code you you'll find a job and you'll be paid you'll be paid well software developers are paid well so you can come back but then i was in nairobi then all this time i was in nairobi and i knew james james now is the ceo of lake hub because we were in the same spaces together james was a student at um, maseno university i was in nairobi i came to kisumu i came back to kisumu my mom lived uh, used to live in kisumu so i came back to kisumu to live with my mom my while in kisumu i said ah this kisumu the, the, you know, the developer ecosystem is not very vibrant eh? mm. because most students would most IT students will leave and go to Nairobi because that's where the action was. I said, okay, now I'll be organizing trainings for people who want to get into software development. I'll do it. And James was doing that as well, but he was doing it in Maseno. I wasn't a student at Maseno, so I was just doing it for anyone who cared to, to be part of it. Mm-hmm. While doing this, I got to partner with Google. Mm-hmm. You know, with time like Google saw this and you know, they came in and said, oh yeah, uh, we like what you're doing. We'll, we'll you know, fund and help some of your programs also so this was also again another affirmation so the other startup is no now esther and my other co-founder now jay are running it they're kind of running it but they're also trying to they're trying to find ways of making money Mm -hmm. mimi i'm here i took a sabbatical (laughs) um said okay you guys figure out uh so connect now mm-hmm. for now i need to uh, because i can't i don't know where to i don't i don't even have a proper place to live because yeah i don't i'm not pay, I, I don't have money mm-hmm. i need to go back home to my, my house now my mom's place and yeah that's why i said okay i'm in kisumu i might as well do something i might mm-hmm. hold training when i was moving back to kisumu that's when my brother-in-law was trying to you know talk to me and tell me why are you going back to kisumu there's nothing in kisumu mm. you have more opportunities in tech in nairobi than in kisumu but i said i just feel like kisumu is it mm. there's something about i need to I, there's something about kisumu so james was you no know, doing it i was doing it this end but we used to meet once in a while then we went back to nairobi again <laughs> i was now between kisumu and nairobi figuring things out sometimes you know sakanek looks up and we uh, investors are calling us or they, we need to do a presentation and when i was in nairobi james then sends me a text like oh yeah i managed to get a space i ro- the space was a hall <laughs> I managed to get a space. I said, really? It was on Google Charts. She, she literally said, kuja uku to, to Fanya Leka. I said, really? I said, yeah. And that's how I moved. I moved to Kisumu and, you know, now setting up Leka. And yeah, it was, it was quite a ride because we didn't think, I didn't think of, you know, for you to run a space. Even if it's a hall, you need to pay rent, you need to pay electricity, you need there are things, there are bills to be paid. And aside from bills, you need to have activities running there. <laughs> For a couple of weeks, James and I were just sitting and looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> because there was actually nothing to do. So when we were setting Lekab, we were setting it to be a space where developers can come, startups can come and you know explore and just work together like a meeting point mm-hmm. for these people. We only saw this happening in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. And the reason why the tech, it's not like in Kisumu people are not learning tech or, mm-hmm. or doing that. It's just that there were no opportunities in Kisumu. So people had to go to Nairobi to do it. So with this setup, our vision was we'd have... A melting point of everyone so people that want to explore entrepreneurship young people that want to explore entrepreneurship developing and you know just startups and in hopes to that will attract investors and also just create a buzz in the tech ecosystem in kisumu but the, you know this takes a while it's not something that you know just because you have a space people think ah <laughs> they look very serious kwanza they're like hey you people what, what, what are the programs we've run at nothing so now before we run the programs we need money <laughs> how much money have you managed 10k <laughs> like nah I just figure it out and then let us know <laughs> we'll still be here so in the beginning i'm very psyched up eh? I'm like yeah i know we are getting no's but this is the process huh? remember i also had experience with the startup but the startup started on a high so it got to a point where we we're like hey okay this maybe was not a very good idea but then the good thing is we had we had people guys coming in in and out of the space young people that were doing what we had hoped for so it, it started growing also organically but then we started creating programs around the activities that people were 
is it the activities that were happening in the hub so mm-hmm. say we have students from Maseno University coming and they're very interested in Python so it's Python Python programming language we have like four people that are interested in Python I said, oh you know what we can do now create a Python user group and invite more people to come line learn Python and so then we also get people who have business ideas startup ideas like oh now you know what we need to do every evening maybe Fridays we need to just have a forum where we exchange ideas so yeah so that's just creating a community around the it's not like so when we had the meetups it's not like we had so many people we were like 10 when we had 20 we we're like oh we have 20 today so that's encouraging in the process also i'm I, I noticed that there were not so many women coming to the space i remember getting getting feedback from someone saying it's it's a very also intimidating space for women because we like i said it was a hall a small hall and at one point you'd find like six dudes just hanging out with their computers and working and then me me there because you know when you come in it's you know this men and it's it's one of those spaces that you think uh I'm not seeing so many female faces, so it's not. And yeah, and that was something. Just thinking of even all the spaces that I was I was in, even in Nairobi, the, the number of women were just very few. So I then started deliberately running programs to bring in more women. I was organizing trainings for women. So you see the, the user groups and the teaching. I said, okay, now we can have just for women mm. like women python women group mm. and nin, nin, nin. the reception to i mean women really liked it but also because there were not so many women studying computer science or computer related courses in uni we didn't get as many women as we had hoped for so my plan was to try to convert people that were studying other courses to, <laughs> to come in which was also not very because i'd get uh, journalism students and tell them oh so now we need to study databases <laughs> for like a two hours or three hour session and then we still never come back <laughs> and they didn't come back yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> And I see how, why <laughs> now. But so what, what now I found, what worked was I started going to primary schools. Mm-hmm. And in the primary schools, I would uh, bring in programs for, you know, young girls and tell them, oh, we're going to study computers and we're going to make apps and games. So in primary school and then in high school, then and it's, it just kept growing and growing and became a thing. And it's still a thing until now. Yes. Yeah, so every January... I get calls from principals asking me, oh, are you coming to our school now? Yeah. And so it got to a point where I couldn't even uh, manage the students to, I mean, mentor and train the students because there were so many. Now I had to say that, oh, we can only take 10 per school or m- maximum of 10 or five. The years I t- only took five in a school because so many people were inter- so many schools were interested in this but also because they were saying the feedback I was getting was most students that have, had gone through the the program really scored like scored A's in in computer studies it was so easy to now teach them computer studies which was considered a very hard which is sometimes considered a very hard subject in school but after going through you know app building which is so funny we made it so much fun because I got university students to come in and help the training and we just made it fun it wasn't a teacher student relationship it was just you know we tried to make it oh mates learning and crack jokes while doing it yeah and it's really grown and the students have really gained so much Access students that went through the program, and almost ninety percent are studying computer-related courses in, in in uni. Yes, and I think now with that we got we, we started getting funding for for our programs. The other programs were also now picking up. We were not just pitching. We had people coming in and telling us, "Oh yeah, now can we develop a three months program out of this pitching and help startups in Kisumu grow?" I, I don't think there was a specific moment of when I knew, but there were so many things that were happening that reaffirmed me so because it used to be up and down one time you're doing it so well and then the other time things are just falling everything is falling apart and you're wondering what you're doing actually there are moments that i can point out there's a time just out of the girls that i was training they got a chance to as us to take them to san francisco to pitch their product so the product was very you know simple products that just come in 
when we are joking and like, oh, what do we make? What app do you uh, guys want us to make? And, you know, it's getting attention. And like, huh, now we are going to San Francisco and we are at Google presenting this. Then also there are times when, you remember the events that I used to hold, like small events. There's a time I... I remember pitching it to telling a few people that I considered I really admired in the tech space. Uh, one of them, Dorothy, Dorothy Oko, telling her, she's like, oh, that's a very good idea. I'd actually come to Kisumu for one. And, you know, for for me, that was, ah, if, I mean, Dorothy wants to come to my event, then this is this is big. And she said, oh, I'll bring, I'll even bring in my colleagues from Google. Yes, to be, to be in your conference. And, you know, that's, that I was like, huh. So they really do like, I am doing something, eh? And then that time, when say the local dailies want to write about it and like oh yeah yeah the disrupting the Kisumu tech space and then I think there was also the time when very early on an organization in Silicon Valley San Francisco Silicon Valley the, the cradle of tech really said oh yeah we have we run this feature called women of Silicon Valley and we want to write about you ah so here in Kisumu Kuf. <laughs> in shags people really also i mean it's gotten out of kenya and now even silicon valley is interested in writing about these stories so i, I guess the very small maybe not really small but such events really keep saying reaffirmed me because i needed it and <laughs> i needed that so one of the accolades that i received was the sakharov prize i was actually a nominee and it wasn't just me it was me plus the group of girls that I was mentoring and training because at that point we were creating an app for I was helping these girls create an app for rescuing or helping girls who have gone through or at risk of going through FGM female genital mutilation and the Sakharov Prize identifies people that have put themselves in line to support say human rights so we were nominees and it's it's not it's it's not a small thing because it's the European Parliament that identifies the people they want to to award that was also a very big point of affirmation because now it's it's not Kenya it's not just silk you know it's Kenya because you're Kenyan and you're doing the work in Kenya and then Silicon Silicon Valley it's because it's tech and you know tech people know tech it's easy to be known it's not easy but you you'd see how you'd be known as a tech person in Kenya in Silicon Valley but then when it's now European Parliament you're like oh okay <laughs> because that's you know that's something else that's over there in France next to you know Germany uh, Strasbourg like oh even people in Strasbourg are talking about us mm. So so when we got the news of the Sakharov, I didn't know what Sakharov was. I'll say from there. Like, so we got an email and like, oh, we've been trying to get in touch with you guys. <laughs> You're not responding to email. There's a Sakharov place. They remember I was called the girls and told them, ah, there's this thing called Sakharov, eh? Check it out. We were checking it out and we see, oh, these people are nominees. I mean, winners, big names, eh? Uh, Malala. Like, okay. Uh, I think there was a point. Um, Mandela was also in the in the list. Uh, the, they're laureates. Oh, it's big, eh? So we were told, don't speak about it first. We, you guys are in line for the award. Don't speak about it yet. So on the day of uh, when the names were going to be, like the top three were going to be mentioned, I was traveling. I was, I was meant to be in Addis. But then we started getting calls from journalists. Like, oh, we want to be with you. We want to record you when you're receiving the news. Like, <laughs> like ah. I told them I'm I'm at the airport I'm leaving I know we can't come to the airport as you wait I said no no <laughs> I don't even think I want to I want to get to the airport so because uh, the girls were are in campus they they're asking me don't what do we do they're asking if they can come to our rooms in campus <laughs> I said, no, 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 don't. If you're not comfortable, then don't do it. Just tell them um, you you prefer to talk to them after. So then, because there was a lot of buzz around us, then just went, oh, it's actually a big thing, eh? And now the EU president was the one to name the names and our names were being called. Like, what? <laughs> so yeah, that was big. Funnily, I don't know why, but I, I knew it was big, but it, it didn't dawn on me that it was big until I was, not until I was in Strasbourg. Not actually, until I was given a handler when I was in Strasbourg <laughs> and we had uh, we, we arrived and there was a schedule and uh, like oh yeah Dory we'll be uh, uh, I'll be working with you I had like three like this is uh, this is your schedule for the two days three days you'll be meeting this person meeting this person we need to I mean everything was so organized I was like oh okay then at one point we were you know networking and I'm just thinking it's you know people just networking and I have a translator next to me and someone is whispering oh that's the, the MP for XYZ I'm like oh okay <laughs> like telling I only see this in the movies <laughs> like yeah, it's whispering in my ear <laughs> 
and translating and everyone is so official you know i i, I get that i'm like oh we're going to meet xyz so that is when it became i mean it became also very overwhelming then i i had to in, in the european parliament they have different houses I had to speak in different houses and speak to this and I had a meeting with the eu president i had a meeting with all these people like okay this is big this is big after after that there are so many opportunities that have come out of that people that really want to work with us and people that are also it's also just now beyond me then lake up it's sort of stamped it like it's a credible organization and if you can recognize them for the work they are doing and even yesterday i got an email from someone from the eu saying oh yeah we need um, from the eu region we need to one was wondering if we can work on a project together and all that yeah so when we came back huh and just thinking about what we just experienced and i remember having this conversation with the girls and i'm happy that i got to experience i call them the girls those guys yeah the high school guys i remember having this conversation with them and like one of the things that they say they're like you know when they say the sky is the limit and you think oh no we just say it we were with the eu president having dinner and lunch like r- literally now nothing is impossible and you know it's not something that they were saying just because they were saying it's the reality their reality like nothing is literally impossible and i think one of the for me personally the thing is i'm not afraid of dreaming because i remember telling my friend who asked me to us how are you feeling what's now what's next for you mates i have lived like my wildest dreams <laughs> and even you know there are times you dream uh, and you know ah, i want to do this i want to do this. but then there are dreams that you don't even dare dream them because they are so out of reach for me now it's i dream i mean like I, there's no cap of how far i can dream or how far i can go but even for lake up like i'm not i'm not afraid to take risks like this is not this is, it's wild but it's not impossible so for, for women that want to get into the tech space and especially the african women cat and don't hold back because for me for someone like me who didn't have any background i didn't even study packages you remember how in high school after high school you used to study computer packages i didn't even study computer packages i got to interact with a proper computer after high school and that was just switching it off and off and typing that was so fascinating for me and have been able to reach here like it's it's so possible i don't even know how i can <laughs> how i can articulate it but aside from me the girls that i i work with i also try so much to work with underprivileged girls girls that would otherwise not get these opportunities because sometimes it's so easy to tell someone to just get in and where do they even start <laughs> you know if you have a chance or if you if you're curious about it and you you're called because i actually call people to be i i'm that oh yeah puja come 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 be part of this i know it's very very intimidating it's it's intimidating to be in that space sometimes when you start in the beginning but keep at it when once you get in just get in and be curious about what's going on in the in the space it's also very important for me to mention consistency because stopping and you know the times when you want to stop and because it's hard take a rest <laughs> and then wake up and continue doing doing it because i tell people i'm not like the brightest or i wasn't the smartest in 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 class and i wasn't scoring you know a's and distinctions but i think what i've noticed for me and from the girls that i train and 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 all that is that they show up they just show up sometimes mm-hmm. just show up and you know be there just showing up is very 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 important i guess for me it's always just showing up and i'll be there i'll i'll listen to to it i'll and just even beyond showing up is give it also a chance like just push yourself even if it's just kidogo and see ah yeah let's let's see where this takes me <laughs> i'm happy to be in a place where we are creating spaces for for people for women for students and young people who are curious about tech and um happy that lekab is doing it also that we have partners that believe in us because if someone else you know if, it's one thing to believe in your dream but it's also it's something else for someone to come in and say oh yeah i like what Do- lekab is doing and i like their vision and i want to invest in that vision lekab is now just even beyond supporting young people and to grow their business their ideas we have also helped grow other spaces like this so you'll find that there are young people who who were incubated at lekab but then it's something that lekab was not doing for them they said okay we have learned a lot from lekab but then we we need this so they have actually gone out to create spaces like lekab and you know that's how also an ecosystem grows so for lekab to be able to help other hubs grow within kisumu that's that's mm-hmm. just amazing and great and it's not something we didn't even anticipate that we just want, knew we were going to help individuals mm-hmm. but for 
companies and hubs to grow out of it. That's crazy. So I'm happy that we are in that space now. That's beyond just inspiring individuals. We are inspiring growth of companies. And uh, that our programs, when when other people believe in your dreams and they want to support that, that's grand. <laughs> so I know this year we have one of the programs we are launching is coding program for girls, girls in underprivileged areas also. We're doing it together with UNDP and that's a big organization to partner with. And we are expanding. It's not just now Kisumu. There is, uh, you know, Busia and people in, say, CIA. So they're like, oh, can we replicate what you're doing? Because you're doing a very good job here. Can we do it in other areas? And we'll support you to do that project in that those areas. So that's, that's big. Just to also mention that through the EU, the French... The French were like, we need to work with you. We, have, we are working with the French embassy now and also reaching again more girls and also running, just running programs on increasing you know, participation of women in tech. We expanded our program to Turkana. And now, yes, I did, last year we did a, a program in Turkana and worked with 50 girls in Turkana. We're working with farmers to build agri-tech products for, you know, for farmers even in, in Western Kenya. This dream that was just very hazy is now, you know, it's clearing up and people can see it. And we have a team. It's not just me and James looking at each other <laughs> like we started. Legally Clueless, powered by the European Union, enhancing Kenyan ideas, creativity and entrepreneurship by supporting different sectors from tech, education, agriculture and healthcare. Visit EU in Kenya on Facebook to find out more on what's happening near you. One thing that I really love about this entire journey recording African stories is when you listen to someone's story, you can actually hear their energy sit through and her docus, you can just tell she's just got some very good energy about her quite the interesting storyteller if ever she wants to change (laughs) career paths and I just love that she shared this really windy road that she took to doing her part to building the tech space in Kisumu regardless of what people were telling her she just kind of kept going and even just her thoughts on having more women in the tech space in the continent. When we went to record the story, we actually went to Kisumu for the day towards the beginning of January, which is super awesome, by the way. You should definitely try it if you're in Nairobi. <laughs> if you can, change of scenery. But um, there were some young girls at Lake Hub. Dorcas was just like interacting with one of them, talking about code and like the laptop is open and there's all of these things that I definitely have no idea <laughs> what they are all of these numbers and it just was you know one of those things that you're like she's passing on knowledge across generations so effortlessly it's such an important thing that we're witnessing and it's happening almost so casually that was quite something so to find more inspiring people and their inspiring stories and to learn more about how the eu in Africa is celebrating, recognizing, and in some cases, accelerating these particular people, just go to the Facebook page, which is EU in Kenya. I've put a link in the show notes, but in case you have no show notes, it's www.facebook.com forward slash EU in Kenya. I've actually also put a link to Lake Hub so you can check out what they're doing in case you're in Kisumu or even if you're not and you want to collaborate with them, which I think everybody should. They're awesome. They really helped us during our tour. Yeah, a link to their website is in the show notes as well. And if you are sitting there and you're just like, yo, I want to share my story as well on the podcast, you can. There is a link to a Google form in the show notes. Just fill it out and I will get back to you. And finally, if you are in Kenya, you can catch this podcast on Trace Radio. Just go to traceradio.co.ke to check out all the... Hmm, wow, I've been doing podcasts for so long, I've forgotten my Frequencies, they're called frequencies. To check out all the frequencies <laughs> that you can catch Trace on around the country and of course you'll find Legally Clueless there every Monday and Wednesday at 12 noon and 11 p.m. and Fridays at 12 noon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode to the very end. If you're also a Feb baby and your birthday is this first week, happy birthday to us. (laughs) Here's to many more years of healing, of growth. Hmm and ooh And those laughters 
that make you cry. You know, you know those ones when you're hanging out with people and they're, they're hilarious or something hilarious happens and you laugh so hard, you're like clapping like a seal and crying in your stomach. Yeah, I want many more of those moments <laughs> in all my years. That's it for this episode of Legally Clueless. You can share this podcast with your friends. You can keep it for yourself. I'm not judging. Just make sure you're here next week for the next episode.